Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. We are back with another video and today we're going to be going through the best way to get focus. And this is mainly going to be for the middle game players. There will be a little bonus at the end of this video, which is for the players going into game, end game, and of course those people already in the end game. So in my previous videos that I do on the steel path and things like that, I show you builds for warframes and a couple weapons. And then I also mention a focus goal, which will either aid you in the mission or plays a pivotal role in completing the mission. So today I'm be showing you the best way to unlock the focus goals and get focus for them. So as always, if you're going to enjoy this video, drop a like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, as always, I want to talk about the focus school. Now, because we are going to be trying to get focus and focus is based off affinity, what we're going to be using is Vizarin. Now, the reason for this is because of the first passive, you could say, and that is that you increase the affinity radius by 25 meters. So as you know, there is a certain affinity range. I believe it is 50 meters. Correct me if I'm wrong. And you need to be within that range with different squad mates and things to be able to get their affinity. And that's what you want to do. You want to get their affinity as well as your own for killing people so that you can get more focus. So that is the reason we're going to be using Vizarin. Okay, so just before we get into the builds and the gameplay, I want to talk about lenses. Now, these lenses basically are going to increase the amount of focus you get by converting a certain percentage of excess affinity into your focus. Now, there are four different types of lenses, the regular lenses, the greater, Eidolon and Lua lenses. Now, going from regular to Lua lenses, you will have an increased amount of excess affinity which is converted into focus. So your regular converts 1.25%, your greater converts 1.75%, your Eidolon converts 2.25%, and your Lua converts 3.25%. So these are just basically gonna amplify the amount of focus that you're getting from kills. So that is all you need to do. Now these can either be equipped on your Warframe or on your weapons. But of course, in the ESO that we're going to do, we're going to be using Warframe as our main nuke because this is going to allow us to kill a lot more enemies than our weapons would. So we're going to get into some builds now. So focus is basically the conversion of excess affinity into our focus school. Now, what is the best way to get affinity? Well, it's just to kill a bunch of things. So we're going to be using a nuke frame. However, I'm going to be talking about three different ways that you can increase the amount of affinity you get on top of just killing everything. So the first one is going to be the affinity booster. Now, these are quite easy to get. However, they do require platinum. They can be bought from the market in your orbiter for 40, 80 or 200 platinum, depending on how long you want them for, whether it's three days, seven days, or 30 days. Now, I know that not every single player that plays this game can actually afford to get these, whether it's because they don't have any platinum or whether they're trying to save up to buy other things like different frames, different weapons, so on and so forth. However, you can also get lucky and get them as a drop from either sorties or archon hunts, I believe. So if there are squad members that you can get from a clan to help you out in these sorties and archon hunts, then you do have a chance at getting a three day affinity booster. So the second way is through an affinity blessing. Now these are quite a bit harder to get unless you have a mass rank 30 friend or know someone who is mass rank 30 in your clan or something like that, who is willing to give you a blessing because Mass Rank 30 players are the only ones who can give you it. Now, they simply go to any relay and there'll be a console where they can interact and give all players within that relay a certain blessing, whether it's a credit blessing, a resource blessing, an affinity blessing, or any of the other ones. Now, as I said, it is a bit harder to come by, 
but if you can get one, it will increase your affinity massively. On top of your resource booster. Alone, it does... It multiplies your affinity less than the regular booster, and it does last less. It only lasts three hours, but if you do have it on top of your booster, it will give you a big increase in your affinity. Now, the final one is the Smita Kavat. Now, the Smita Kavat probably is not that difficult to get. Of course, you just need to scan a couple Kavats, get the incubator core, and then put it on. However, it's all about chance what pet that you get. You could get an Adaza Kavat, you could get a Smita Kavat, you could get any of those. Now, once you have it, you also need the Charm mod, which basically allows your Smita to have a chance to proc a certain ability every 28 seconds. Now, it is only a chance. One After 28 seconds, they may not give you anything, but after the next 28 seconds, they will. Now, these can range from your affinity and resource boosters. They act as one. So you can increase affinity and increase the number of resources that you pick up. You can get quick chance, you can get qu uh, quick reload, you can get a shield proc, all these different things. So it's not a guarantee, but if you do get it, it acts like a resource booster and gives you the same multiplier. And it lasts, I believe, two and a half minutes. And if you get really lucky, they can stack on top of each other and you can get two affinity boof boosters from your smear basically giving you a quadruple affinity right but those are the three ways i would definitely say can increase your affinity while you're in elite at sanctuary onslaught or just trying to get affinity from just killing things in general okay so we're going to be going through sarian first now i have got two builds for her one is which has super low efficiency and so will require arcane energize but since this is a eidolon arcane not a lot of people have it so i have made a separate build without arcane energize but the one with we have physique for just extra health and extra mod capacity really this doesn't really matter as much if you did want to former however you could put growing power on instead of physique which increases your power strength even further but for this one, we're just using Physique. Then we have Primed Flow here for just a lot of energy capacitance. It's going to allow us to pick up a lot more energy and store it. And this is going to be further amplified, of course, with our Arcane Energize. Then we have Overextended Range and Stretch. Stretch. This is just going to be so that we can reach a larger amount of enemies and kill a lot more. Then in order to assist with killing the enemies, we have Augur Secrets here, Umbral Intensify, Transient Fortitude, and Blind Rage. These are just going to massively increase our strength up to 258%. Then as I said, in terms of Arcanes, we have Arcane Energize here to multiply the amount of energy that we pick up from the energy orbs. And then we also have Malt Augmented, which on every kill we get an increase in certain amount of ability strength. And this will remain... So you don't, once you die, you don't need to get another 250 kills. However, you need to be revived by a teammate. If you self-revive, then those stacks will be gone and you have to re-get 250 kills. So, essentially this build is just a lot of power strength, a lot of range, just to kill a lot of enemies. Okay, so with the build that doesn't have Arcan Energize, we've got a little bit of a different one. So... Similarly, we have Physique again for just extra mod capacity, and we have the Overextended, Stretch, and Augur Reach for increased range, Prime Flow for energy capacitance. However, we have taken off Blind Rage because this is going to allow us to keep our efficiency at 100, and it means that we can just pick up energy as we go, and it doesn't really matter as much that we don't have Energize. And then, of course, Instead of the Blind Rage, we have substituted it with Power Drift to get a little bit more of a strength compared to if we didn't have it at all. Molt Augmented is the same. On kill, we get Ability Strength. And this one isn't an Eidolon 
arcane, you get it from the Zaraman for 10,000 standing per arcane, so it's not that bad. And I know that Arcane Guardian is a Eidolon Arcane, so if you don't have any Eidolon Arcanes, you don't need to put any on, it is fine. But I would recommend the Molt Augmented, just to increase your strength more, especially since we don't have Blind Rage to have the 258% strength. But that is the build for Sarian. Again, we're going for a lot of range here, a little bit less strength, but this is a sacrifice to increase our efficiency back to 100. So, with that done, let's get into the next frame. Okay, so, our second frame of choice is going to be Vault Prime. Now, the build is pretty much the same as the Sarian. However, we do have Steel Charge instead of Physique for extra mod capacity. And it does give us 18 opposed to 14, I believe, on Sarian. And then the rest is the same. We have Umbral Intensify, Augur Secrets, Blind Rage, and Transient Fortitude for our ability strength. We have Stretch, Augur Reach, and Overextended for some range. And then we have Prime Flow for Capacitance. Now, it does say Six Former up here, but the only reason I've used Six Former is for my Eidolon build. You do not need it for the Nuke build. And... It will require less former, which means you will also probably not have Prime Sure Footed on. Now, I can just put it on because I have mod space, but as you saw on my Sarian build, I didn't have it, and it's because I can get through the ESO without getting knocked over so um, a lot. So that is fine. Now, as I said previously, if you don't have Energize, just swap out Blind Rage for Power Drift, and that will increase your strength a little bit. And it will also bring back your efficiency to 100%. So, with that build out the way, let's get into the final frame. Okay, so, we're on to our third frame, which is going to be Mirage. Now, for this build, you will need Prism Guard Augment. So, if you do not have access to these, or there's no way of trading it, because you're sort of low on Platinum, or that sort of reasons, then I would say stick to the Sarian and Vault builds. But for those of you who do have access to Augments and do want to know this build, we have Sprint Boost on. This is mainly just for uh, mod capacity. However, the Sprint Speed can help since we will be running around the map constantly. And I'll explain that once we get to the Augment mod. But we have Overextended here for a bit of range. Now, some of these mods will increase other attributes and decrease others. So Overextended, increase range, but reduces strength. So, then we have Prime Continuity here with Narrow Minded for Ability Duration. And then we have our Sources of Strength through Transient Fortitude and Umbral Intensify with a bit of efficiency from our Streamline. And then we have Natural Talent because without this, Prism usually takes like 2-3 seconds maybe to actually activate and throw. And it just makes you a sitting duck and you get literally destroyed by all the enemies. So we have natural talent for the casting speed and then finally we have our prism guard now this augment makes it so that the prism is above mirage's head at all times and this is why we're going to be running around the map just literally beaming the hell out of enemies okay so that's the drift of it if you go to the gameplay you'll see sort of a visualization of it and it'll probably be a little easier to understand but for Arcanes, we have Arcane Energize just to get as much energy as we can since because our Prism Guard reduces our Prism duration to 4 seconds, even with um, Prime Continuity and Narrow Minded, it does give it to about 8 seconds. So we will still be casting quite a bit. Then we have more Augmented, get the kills, increase our ability strength, and it's going to make it easier to just kill the enemies as well. Now, in the sort of gameplay, I just want to say that when you are in that first wave, don't just think of it as like a, a sort of filler wave, right? Where you're just waiting for the second wave to come so you can amplify your focus as much as you can with that 40 second timer. Use that first wave to kill as many enemies as you can with your frame in order to build up your Molt Augment stacks and get that extra ability strength for the second wave. But that is the build. Now we're going to get into some gameplay.
another tactic. Transfer is still holding. Proceed immediately. Proceed immediately. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the bonus method of farming focus, which is going to be through Eidolon hunting. Now, as you can see on screen, when you kill Eidolons, you can get these different shards, each of which give a certain amount of standing or focus per shard that you convert. So, the Radiant ones give 40,000, the Brilliant ones give 25,000, and your regular Eidolon shards give 2,500. But you will obviously get a lot more of the regular Eidolon shards compared to the Brilliant and the Radiant. So essentially the whole point is that you kill, but I would say you'd rather capture these different Eidolons because you want to reap the most benefits out of g doing the hunt. So you can get the shards of course for focus, you can then get the different Eidolon Arcanes, like Arcane Energize, Arcane Guardian, all of those good ones. And then you can also get sentient cores, which you can then trade in to call Onko on Cesus for different arcanes, for your operator, different amps, different cosmetics, all of that good stuff. And the nice thing about this is that it can be used along with the ESO to farm focus because you can only hunt Eidolons at night. And then once that night is over and you've done your hunt, you can then move back to ESO, continue doing that to gain more focus, and then you can switch back once the next night approaches to Eidolons, capture them, kill them, get your shards, get your arcanes, and all that other good stuff. If you guys do want a beginner guide on how to get your first Eidolon hunt completed, then drop a like, comment, any of that, which will tell me to do so, and I will definitely get that out for you guys. Now, the thing about these Eidolon shards, you cannot unlock your focus school for the first time with these. You need to use a lens and get your 50,000 focus and then unlock the school. And then once you have unlocked the school, that's when you can go down here to convert your focus or your Eidolon shards into focus. Now you can put however many you want in there, whether you only need a little bit, whether you need all of it. It is up to you. And then you can then use that to put it onto your different abilities. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found it useful. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, comment, all that good stuff. Hope you have a good day and I will see you in my next video.
Peace. So catch me if I fall.